do, 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 do. Welcome back, Tools and Track. The, uh, we discussed this last week, the last three things that I need to finish this car. Uh, it's probably going to be more than three things, but we're on episode 80, whatever it is now. So let's do a tagline for the last list, right? The last leg of getting this thing running. I'm going to call it done by a ton or finished by episode 100. I'd like to think finished by episode 90, but clearly, as we've established, I need breathing room. First order of business is going to be this. So we did mention in the last episode that after fitting this and attempting to look smug, I failed because interference fit. First thing I want to try is just take the exhaust off altogether and see if it resolves the vast majority of the fitment issues I'm having here. Once that's done, we need to make up brackets because even if this does sit on that rear bar, there's nothing really holding this down. So I don't want to do paint until I'm sure that absolutely every last Ah, shit. I'm also managing to crack it with this. Yeah, we need to secure the back somehow because it's just going to flop and not really be great. And I, I think I've actually only got two points of securing at the moment, which is the two bits we made at the bottom. Uh, yeah, I do. So at least two more in the back for stabilities. And yes, before anyone probably correctly points out that we already have the brackets for the back, we had the brackets for the back, these mounted onto the chassis, and now there's a whole roll cage thing in the way. So we're remaking it. And I mean, that's the guts of about two or three kilos, so let's make it lighter. Yeah, you're probably going to find a few of these instances where I go, oh, I didn't fit that right, such as these pods, which were back to front. Cue an entire headlight disassembly so that they actually fit right. Also, thanks to Daniel, we now have a wee uh, Deutsch connector here. I did have this uh, radiator fan assembly hooked up with just speed connectors, but they, uh, it's not very neat. And also they tend to pull off if you have to disassemble it. Not saying the radiator is going to come out often, but if it does need to come out, it's a simple unplug affair and the whole lot removes without buggering up loom. Right, I've actually managed to fix this clutch issue with just a simple appliance of science. As you saw, we took the clutch pedal off and banning my complete and absolute tomfoolery of putting the bolt in the wrong way around before we assembled the car around it, we've now moved the fulcrum point up. Now, what does that mean? Imagine you've got a seesaw, somebody sitting in the short end and somebody sitting in the long end. Whoever sits in the short end would need to be significantly heavier than the person on the long end in order for it to balance. That makes sense. So what we had with the clutch was, my foot would have to go here and the clutch was here. So I was having to put way too much effort in because this original hole was in the wrong bit of the fulcrum point. What I've done by simply moving my fulcrum point further up the pedal and thereby changing the angle that the clutch pin goes in at, we have improved or rather lightened the clutch pedal considerably. It's still quite heavy and I think it's possibly because I'm using a Land Rover Master Cylinder or MX-5 slave cylinder 
this is obviously going to be a problem and we may look into it in further depth if it gets to really, really problem areas. But for now, it actually works. So we're going to roll with the ice on it and just carry on. And by carry on, I mean make proper progress. Let's finish a skull. Now, yes, I know it looks terrible, but I'm going to stipulate a few points. One, a significant part of this will not be visible, and I'm done trying to make things that are not visible look good with this car. It needs to run. This is the aero screen. We'll attach this and hide 80% of the sins that are going on here. Second up, we're probably going to have to butcher this a bit more. Dash panel needs to go in the back. This part's never seen. Just build a bridge and get over it. So I've now run all the loom through here and that was annoying as well because there's a few of these I've had to disconnect, label, run through and then reconnect because this loom still doesn't technically disconnect and go through that transit block. Now that's probably not going to be an issue and it's actually going to get a lot worse the more we assemble the loom so I'm just going to have to suck it up. Now one of the people that commented the other day was like well why don't you just cut a wee notch in here? Not entirely against this idea, the worse this gets, but for the moment, we'll just run with this. If this has to come off and on frequently, then yeah, you better believe I'm just going to cut that out. Anyway, now we have a situation where we can get on with this. Yes, I know we were going to finish the tub, but that's the only part left now that's not in paint. Crucially, I've moved this car away from a point where it runs, and it did run before. So what I need to do is get this back to a position where when I turn this key, things happen. Uh, because if I don't, many many moons will pass and then I'll be like hmm why doesn't this car start when it did before and I'll have no idea why so let's get back to turnkey and then we'll do other things certainly hiding a lot of sins, isn't it? Do have some issues. These wee cap screws that obviously are quite dressy and stainless steel are maybe not entirely the right length, so I'll probably order some longer ones and some actual nylock nuts. I've also put like rubber grommets, not grommets, o-rings, rubber o-rings in between this bit and this bit. And it's just to help it bind together without scratching and whatever else, but I'm not entirely sure that's gonna be necessary. Nonetheless, I've stuck them in anyway, it's not going to hurt. <sighs> right. Next. At the moment, I'm trying to work out where to mount the ECU for good now. With the exception of battering my knee off of this exhaust bracket every time I go and do it, I've had a look at this numerous times and I'm not finding the inspiration I need. Now, beforehand, I had lots of this uh, scuttle space. Obviously, the scuttle itself now sits on top and splits that in half, so landing this big square ECU on something's a bit tricky. Now, I did consider mounting it vertically, uh, but the logic would say, well, mount the top half onto this, but then it's a whole thing when you ever need to take this off. So I need to come up with a bracket that will put this somewhere that's out of the way of getting booted by feet, but it's also quite sensible. So that's going to look like this.
Okay, ECU is in. Loom is more or less rooted to be finished, which is good. Uh, this tips still because I've not bolted it down. However, uh, we still need to do a actual dash panel for this. And I did have aluminium sitting aside and it's an inch short on each side, obviously, because it's me. So I was kind of hoping this was a meter, it's more. We'll come back to that because there's a lot of design that's probably gonna have to go into this. Uh, and I don't really know how or what needs to be presented on the dash yet, but that's another day. However, the clamshell we can finish. So I have put this on. We're not thinking about the exhaust because that doesn't really stop the clamshell being finished. I'm just raging and don't really want to have to deal with it yet again. So what I need to do here is finalize a couple of bits and pieces before we throw paint on this. Now you think, what more can be done? If you take a look here, you'll notice that this doesn't actually sit on the bottom of the rail there. If I go to here, you'll notice that's more or less flat. So if I pull this down, you'll notice this now wobbles. We have a pivot point here. Now this is the same on both sides and I don't really know why I missed this. I guess, you know, do one thing, do another thing, forget to put them both in the same place at the same time and then you find a problem. So against my better judgment, I'm going to take a notch out of this just to clear these bits. Now, my better judgment is saying that's going to take a whole lot of strength out of this and could cause the whole thing to kind of bend in the middle. But there's no other way to deal with this short of doing major surgery, so that will be the solution. What it will mean is whenever we put it back on or take it off and move it around for paint, we have to be very delicate with it. I don't even know where to begin with this. Like, I remember it wasn't great looking, but it looks bloody awful. Um, so, right, um, right, summary, this fuel filler is no. That's just not gonna work. The bar above it just means, you know, the reinforcement thing that goes around here, that is completely incompatible with this. So I'm gonna blank this off. I don't know where the fuel filler is gonna live, but it's not gonna live there. That's completely pointless. So whatever we do, that needs to get get gone. This, the rest of it, I've got like wee dimple holes and pre-drilled holes like these. I've just taped at the back of them. I'm just going to put a skim of filler over all of these. Uh, I'll be honest, I think I'm going to flatten all this off just really, really flatly, aggressively and try and get a level on this. I just failed to get a level on it. And I think it's because I'm never going to get one, but at the moment this is just terrible. So the problem is I think I can actually see daylight through it. So I don't know how thick it is, but whatever the story, start again on that. And then uh, everything else, but you know, first. I am very close to just going good enough and sending a whole of black paint over this, but I'm also very tired. <laughs> this has been like 
a good solid eight hour shift on a Sunday. So I'm going to pin this, walk away, because I suspect just one last wee skim of tiny little problem areas with some of the old uh, dolphin glaze filler might actually deal with that and make it look fairly presentable as opposed to just good enough just now. So let's try that next. Give it a nice flatten, a proper primer. Hopefully this gets black. So as you can see, that is now more or less done. I told you, yeah. I told you. Except I've been away on holiday for the past two days, so it wasn't me that done it. So who has done it? I didn't kill him. Bond did. Let's go find James Bond. Have you been touching my clamshell? <laughs> Look at him. Loves the camera. He loves it so much. There's a phone, I need to go. Oh, he needs a phone. <laughs> I was going to give him a mic. So I got this to the point where it was joined and I thought it was flat, but then it wasn't because nothing was working right when I put primer on it. So what did you actually do? Well, again, just, just where you had this kind of filler yeah. on this kind of join here and this kind of join here, yeah. all I've done is make that, that, that partially bigger right. so that you could blend off of this side and then blend off of that side and then try and flatten out with this fiberglasser. You can still feel it a wee bit, but again, yeah. it's a track car, so you're not really, you don't have to have it absolutely perfect. So all it was doing is a matter of blending that into that as best as we can. Right. That's, that's all I've literally done. But it's getting there now, though. So you're saying there. I'm not, I've not added enough filler, basically. Yeah, but, you can, but you've, got to, you've got to draw the line somewhere because you're filler primer, filler primer, filler primer, and yeah. you've got to kind of call it there. So even if I were you, I would just flatten off this section here that you can see. Camera might not be able to pick it up, uh -huh. but I would literally just flatten that wee spot off there. That, that again, filler will maybe pick that up and then just flatten it off and then that's you. Because you're going to need to call it a day at some point, otherwise you'll be there. Ah, uh, you'll be there forever. Sweet. So, right, yeah. well, thanks very much. You're welcome. Awesome. <laughs> So finally, it's paint time. It cannot be understated how happy I am that this is now black. This has been a bit of a noose in my neck, if I'm being honest, because it's taken so long to just get that bit right. But now that it's in black, granted, it will need a flatten down and a bit of a polish. It can finally go on the car for good. But we're going to wrap up here because in the next episode, I have one last task I need to do before this goes on. Now, I'm not going to give any spoilers, so just make sure you've got that subscribe button hit to see what comes next and make sure you do the like and share if you wouldn't mind. You must know somebody that would like this. Give it a share, put it in your social media because it's really not happening at the moment and it's starting to kind of kill the channel a bit. So I'd appreciate if you could at least, just, just this one time, try it, give it a go. If you want to support more on that, patreon.com slash tools and track. We've got some t-shirts on there. This will be the last week I think of that actually coming out before uh, we, we stop that pre-order. I may have actually stopped it now, I don't know. I'm doing well with this whole uh, managing my social media presence. And uh, until next weekend, guys, drive safe.